you for tuning into TTV. I'm your host, Toya, and I just want to say Happy New Year. Let's welcome in 2023. It's going to be fantastic and so much better than 2022. Because I don't know about you guys, but 2022 was a bit rough for me. But it's only get better from here, right? So before I get started, though, like always, please like, subscribe, and share, because if you get anything out of this content, chances are someone else will as well. Also, check out the links down below for my book, uh, Tease Collection, as well as the link for Young Living. Young Living is the essential oil company best in the business. So check them out, both of those links out below, and let's get started. So if you notice, I really haven't been doing as many videos lately, and that was because I finally got through the one year, 365 days of doing videos. And so my ancestors have allowed me <laughs> to just do them as I need to, which um, has actually has to do with the fact that so, many, so much has changed with me in the past two months, okay? And that is what prompted me to come on here today to talk to you guys, because it is 2023, it's January 1st, you know, the first day of a whole new year. Um, I saw somebody had uh, posted on social media where they said that you have a 365 day blank slate. Okay. So that's what this is. Every day we wake up is a new day and a new blank slate, but this is a new blank slate as far as the year goes. And so one of the things that I did a little differently this year was, is yesterday I reflected on everything that went and happened in 2022. So the changes and things that I went through, everything that happened from the beginning to the end, and then today, actually after I finish doing this video, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to reflect on everything that I want to come in the future, except for when I do it, it'll be in the present tense so that I can call it to me as if I already have it. But just to give you a little more details, which because you know, I'm going to go into detail. <laughs> but for last night, what I did was, um, for those of you who don't know me, because most of the people who do know me or have watched the show have heard me state that. This time last year, I was actually on my way to getting fired from my job, okay? So I was one of those many of thousands of people who got fired for not getting vaccinated. And so January 4th of last year, that's when this all started. So they actually suspended us in December, the beginning of December, and then fired us in January, okay? So this time last year, I was stressed out. I was worried about my finances I was worried about what was to come in the future, trying to make these plans that did not go the way I wanted them to or what way I thought they were going to go. But that's that's the beauty in it, right? We set ourselves on this path and then God turns us down a different direction because what I'm doing today, I never thought in a million years I would be doing, okay? Never thought I would be doing this. But I'm going to get to that soon. So I looked at my whole year starting at that January 4th when I got fired, how I was feeling, um, what it, the outcome looked like, and what happened over those few months, okay, for over the year, actually. So in February, I ended up having to quit my second job that I had, that I had just picked up just for some fun cash and try to help catch up on some bills. So I ended up having to quit that because my back went out, <laughs> okay? So... Now, come uh, March, I had no job, no income, no nothing coming in. I had a friend who asked me to come down to Florida with her so that we can, because it was a trip that she needed to take for her, what we thought was her journey. And it ended up being my journey. Because <laughs> again, we set out in one way, but God has another way for us when we do that. And it's God, Yahweh, Jehovah, Spirit, whatever name you give it, it's all the creator spirit. So we think one thing and we set out for one thing and God says, no, that's not what you're doing today. This is what we do. So we get down there and it ended up being this whole spiritual experience that happened to me. <laughs> so again, we thought we were going for her, but it was a spiritual journey for me. So after that, that was in March. Then I thought about, okay, what happened in April? Not much happened in April. Um, not much happened in May, but in June, I started doing this uh, mentorship with a lady named Ozma who was doing um, consumer law mentorship. And so had to go down to North Carolina for three months in a row. <laughs> just It was just a one day class, three months in a row. So go down there and had that experience. I met some beautiful people, okay? Some beautiful souls that I still keep in touch with now. You know, some of them, not all of them, but some of them I still keep in touch with. All of them I still love to death, but it's just, you know, you know how it happens. Sometimes it's just those few that 
you know, you connect with and you keep in touch with like that. But all of them were beautiful souls. So they are considered, well, I call them my credit family, okay? Everybody that was in my class was a part of my credit family. And so three months of doing that and that journey and just um, what ended up happening is the first time I flew down there, the second two times I drove. And in driving down there, I learned that, I, well, I didn't learn, but I discovered that those became spiritual journeys for me as well, because nobody's in the car but me. It's just me traveling on this road, and I already do alone trips, okay? So I know when you get to that quiet time when it's just you and your own thoughts, that sometimes that's when God's voice is the loudest, okay? That's when your ancestors come and start talking to you. That's when they start putting bugs in your ears, okay? And so... I learned that taking those drives and I learned to appreciate and even crave those drives now that that is a spiritual time for me to get closer and more connected, not only to God, but to my ancestors and to those spiritual guys that are around me. And so it, it's amazing because now I have dreams <laughs> and in my dreams, I see things or come across things that I didn't even know exist. And so when I come out of that dream, I go look it up and like, oh my God, this is a real thing. You know, like this actually exists and it looks exactly like it did in my dream. It's, it's so amazing. But I never would have those experiences that I have now if I didn't end up doing those drives down to North Carolina by myself and be open to the fact that this is going to be a spiritual time and 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 commune in that spiritual time. Because there's times I just had to turn off the radio. There's times when my best friend called me. Like, I'm going to tell y'all this. Okay, so the first time I did it, <laughs> the first time I went down there. I'm driving as soon as I get out the city. And I mean the soon as I get out the city. And I'm now on the open road to where I don't really have to worry about what exit or what turn. I can just focus on the road, um, listen to my music or my book, and just, you know, enjoy the drive. They had my best friend call me. And so it ended up being basically like the talk ended up being basically like a spiritual cleansing. Okay. So now I'm on this open road. She's talking to me about what came to her <laughs> to talk to me about. And I'm out there on the open road just driving and crying, looking a hot mess, okay? But at the end, when I got to my destination, I felt good. I felt at peace. And one of the things that some of the people were asking me, you know, was like, oh, wow, you drove here by yourself. Well, yeah, I did. Because I'm never really by myself, you know, and I don't really worry about that. I, I don't worry about what could or what might happen, because if you do that, you stay in that fear. And a lot of times you start calling that energy to you. So you're going to get that energy that's going to come to you and do what it is that you're just so afraid of happening. And so I know when I walk out the door, I'm coming back. And that's just, just the end of, just like you would say, the sky is blue, the rain is wet. Um, I just know I'm coming back. Every day I'm coming home. So it, it's, it's not even, I don't want to say it's a concern. Like I put myself in situations because I don't. I'm still smart about my stuff, myself and how in the positions that I put myself in. But it's just, I don't worry about harm coming to me like that. And, and even if it was a situation where there would be some harm, I've had enough experiences with that to where you get that internal feeling that tells you, uh-uh, don't do that. Mm, this ain't right. So, okay, this is getting a little off track, but there's this massage place around the corner from me. And I, this, this goes along with what I just said. Um, I like getting massages. And so I walked in here because I walked in the, in, into the the, ther the massage place because I, I was like, okay, cool. They right around the corner from me. Let me see how much they are, see if they any good. And this could be where I go, especially, you know, if I do a night once and I can just come home, get in the bed and go to sleep. Right. So I walked in there and the feeling I got was no, get out, <laughs> get out. So this lady comes from behind the, the other side of the wall, around the corner. We'll just say around the corner. And she's all out of breath and, all, you know, eh, you know, that fake smile. Hi. And I asked her, because, and this was the other thing that threw me off. All their massages were the same price. It didn't matter whether you was getting hot stone, whether you was getting um, the oil treatments, aromatherapy. It didn't matter what kind of massage you were getting. Swedish, deep tissue, none of it. It was all $50. So that caught me off right away and then i ask her okay what availability do you have she just said what day do you want okay so i gave her a day and time she said okay we'll see you then didn't write nothing down didn't do anything and all on the inside of me was like get your butt out that place like get out of here this is not for you 
Come to find out, they were doing um, trafficking and stuff in there. <laughs> so that that's what I mean when I say I walk out the door knowing I'm going to come back. Because even if I do get into a situation, I know my people got my back. They're going to tell me, get your butt up out of there. Okay, get out of there now. And I know enough to listen. Okay, so um, do I try to test that, put it to the test? No, I don't. No, I don't. I'm not that foolish. But in any case, that's what I'm saying. I learned to to take those drives and be on those drives and really enjoy that journey. And then I ended up in Georgia. So I had drove all the way down to Georgia. And this was a different credit group, different. Some of the same members, but most the majority of people I came across were different. And again, it was just that camaraderie and that just that connection of just being around people like minded like you that are learning and studying the same thing as you, that are going through some of the same struggles as you are, and that are hungry for the same knowledge that you're you're after. And so being in that room and being around that atmosphere and around those people, I got more credit family, <laughs> okay? And it was just a beautiful time. So outside of that, I, I for, fast forward, <laughs> this is what we're going to keep doing, fast forward. Um, I spent time with my family and I had a beautiful conversation with my cousin and we found out that there's more similarities between the two of us than what we what we thought. OK. And then what happened was come September or October, around that time, it might have been all in October. I think it was all in October. Now that I think about it. Go back. Yes. It all was in October. Um, it was five different people who lost somebody at one time. Five different people. Now, out of those people, two of them, one well, two of them that I know of, I don't know about the rest of them, but the two that I do know of, neither one of them had a wheel, neither one of them had life insurance. And so the one who passed left that burden onto her child and her child basically ended up wiping out her entire savings, taking care of medical expenses, taking care of final expenses, like all of that. And she had saved money up to purchase a house. So her down payment for the house was completely gone. Okay. And after that, she's back to being paycheck to paycheck. Then I had um, another friend of the family who has known me since the day I came home from the hospital. She passed. And in the process of her passing, she left a major burden on her oldest sister who has her own issues. OK, she got her own health issues that she's dealing with. But now she's got the issue of getting her apartment cleaned out. She got the issue of paying for the apartment. She has the issue of going through probate to get, because it's not an apartment, I keep saying apartment, it's a condo, but she has the, the um, burden of going through probate to even get the apart, get the condo so that her nephew can have it and move into it, okay? And so that's draining. Not only is it physically draining her, it's also, you know, financially draining, okay? So those were those two. And it was just because of two simple things that neither one of them had, which was a wheel and a life insurance policy. So little did I know <laughs> that that would lead me into getting my life insurance, life health and accident insurance license. OK, so that's where I am today. OK, so in the in November, I ended up taking a test, passing the exam. And the company that I originally started out with, I really didn't like the work ethics of the people that I would have had to work with directly. And so it wasn't comfortable. So I switched to a different company. And then through that different company, I end up being trained to be a financial advisor as well. And so we start out January with me working for an insurance company. <laughs> like I'm telling y'all, this is crazy. Working for an insurance company that I got fired from to ending up being on the other side and working in insurance dealing with life and accident and helping people get wheels and Roth accounts and everything else that we do. <laughs> so when I say 2022, it was very difficult. It was a very difficult time financially um, for me because I was not prepared for, for what happened in 2022. I just, I wasn't, I was not prepared at all. Um, I wasn't prepared to lose my job. <laughs> like I just, all of it. I had no idea what I was going to be doing. I ended up on this spiritual journey because I also ended up in therapy so that I can work through some of the traumatic events that have happened throughout my life. So you have all of this that goes on in 2022. For me to come out in 2023 stronger, more focused, with an understanding of where I'm going and what it is that I need to do. 
And so without going back and really looking at and reviewing everything that happened all through 2022, I wouldn't have had the appreciation that I have right now for 20, for this coming year, for 23. And I can say that because until I actually wrote it down and until I actually sat down and really reflected on everything that happened in 2022, I was like that. I was just looking at it. Okay, well, this isn't happening and that's not happening. And this is where I am. And that's where I am, where you got to stop and take a moment to look and see where you came from. Like, where did you start? Where did this journey start? Where did you start on this path? Or where did you start on this road to end up where you are right now? Because it didn't happen overnight. And if you don't look and see where you were, so where I was in the beginning of 2020. Uh, 2022 was jobless, <laughs> okay, jobless, shun, you know, worrying about my lifestyle, worrying about how I was going to take care of myself to so ending up not only now here in the beginning of January of 2023, not only being a capable or a position to take care of myself, but also in a position to help others. And so now that is my goal. I want my goal, because I'm not going to say I want, I am, I will help 1,000 families so that they don't end up in some of the same situations that I ended up in. Because if I had emergency funds or if I had, you know, different accounts and things set up, then I wouldn't have, this, this whole 2022 wouldn't have been as stressful as it was for me. And so, and if my friends and family has somebody like me right now in their life to tell them, hey, you need to get a will. You need to get your life insurance. Hey, let's figure out how to get you out of debt so you don't have to worry about these bills no more. You know, if if they had somebody, if I had somebody who was telling me that at that time, then the situation would be different because I don't want to leave that burden onto my children. And I'm sure you don't want to leave that burden onto anybody else as well. And so, with that being said, that's my new goal. That's what I'm working on is to help 1,000 families, whether it's families, individuals, 1,000 people I want to help, okay? I want to help them get their finances together. I want to help them, you know, secure their retirement. I want to help them secure their children's future and create generational wealth. That is my new goal. And so that will happen by the end of January, by the end of uh, 2023. Actually, my ancestors and stuff tell me by June. So that's my goal. That's what I am, what I'm doing. That's my passion and my main, main focus for 2023. So no, I'm not doing a New Year's resolution. Okay. Cause New Year's resolutions were meant to be, to be broken. Okay. Cause we, we don't resolve to do anything. We just resolve to looking at it and then we go back into our comfort zone. So I'm not making a resolution. I'm making a goal. And so my one year goal is to help 1,000 families. And in helping those 1,000 families, it will create other opportunities for me to help other people in different manners and in different aspects. And so it's, it's a beautiful place to be in, a beautiful position. So that is my message for you guys today. Reflect over what happened in 2022. Write it down. OK, because when we start to write it down, we start to relive it. We start to really think it. we start to see it. And when you see it and you think it and you feel it, you can relive it to understand this is where I was and this is where I am now. And so it will help you to appreciate where you are right now. And if for some reason you go back and you look at what happened in 2022, when you come back to 2023 and you don't have no appreciation, you don't feel good, that you feel worse, or you feel like you're in a worse situation than you were in the beginning of January, then that's where you center those goals on. Don't make resolutions. Make goals on what you want to see changed in 2023. Make those goals for what you want to do different and be better at in 2023. That's what this time period is really, what I believe this time period is really for. It's not for us making resolutions that we're not going to keep. It's not for us making these promises we're not going to keep. It's not for us to go to the gym for the first two, three weeks, maybe a month, month and a half at best, and then quit. This is where we really come and we really reflect on the things that we have going on in our lives, our positions, and where we want to be, our dreams. And that's where you reestablish all of that and you set up your goals starting day to day, week by week, month by month 
to get where you're trying to go. Okay. And if you need my help, like I said, 1,000 families, I'm helping 1,000 families. So if you need my help and my assistance to get you there to that point, then please reach out to me, direct message me. Um, I have an e-contact email down below. Reach out to me. You know, I don't bite. <laughs> so I will be willing to sit down with you and really see what we can do. But anyway, that is my goal. And that's what I implore you to do is go back and reflect. All right. So that's my message. If you got anything out of it, please like, subscribe and share. And also um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and share with those you know, love and care about. Okay. So I love you and I'll talk to you later.